Let's take some time to pray. Father, we want to hear from you today. And we want to hear your instructions for our lives, but also for your church. Lord, as we listen today, I pray that the words I speak are your words and not mine. Words that you have already prepared for us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as we've continued to look at the people of Advent and Christmas, we see common themes coming through. Themes of obedience and trust in God. Today we look at Joseph, the man God chose to be the earthly father, we might call it stepfather, to his one and only son. The true God of true God, as we sang in O Come, All Ye Faithful, a little earlier. But why did God choose Joseph? Why a simple carpenter instead of someone else? We're not told a lot about Joseph, except for his part in the Christmas narrative, and then a little further into Jesus' teenage years, and then nothing. He doesn't seem to be around at the time of, that we get to Jesus' three years of ministry, and so we assume he died. Jewish men were usually a lot older than their teenage brides, and so it makes sense that he could have died by then. But from the little we are told about Joseph, there are three main reasons that God chose him. Firstly, he loved God. What did it mean for a Jewish man in the first century AD to love God? Well, he was faithful to the law, it said in verse 19. For a Jewish man to be faithful to the law, it meant that he feared God. He respected God and he obeyed God's commands. So it meant that he was also obedient. There's that theme again. And we see examples of Joseph's obedience throughout the early parts of the gospel. He obeyed the angel every time. We see this. He obeyed him when he said, Marry Mary, in verse 24. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Then he obeyed the angel when he said, Flee to Egypt, in Matthew 2 verses 13 to 23 it says when they had gone an angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream get up he said take the child and his mother and escape to egypt stay there until i tell you for herod is going to search for the child to kill him so he got up took the child and his mother during the night and left for egypt where he stayed until the death of herod and so was fulfilled what the lord had said through the prophet out of Egypt I called my son. He was then obedient to return to Egypt. We see this in Matthew 2 as well, verses 19 and 20. After Herod died, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph. That's how he spoke to him. And he said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. <clears throat> Excuse me. For those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. And then he obeyed God to settle in the Galilee region in Nazareth. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Joseph loved God so much that he knew God's compassion and was only going to divorce Mary quietly, but then instead listened to the angel and he married her, taking on the responsibility that God gave him in God's story of redemption. He, we also see more obedience from Joseph when he took Jesus to the temple to be dedicated. And we see this in Luke 2.21. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. And so he did what was asked of him. And then he made the journey to Jerusalem each year with the family. And we see an example of this again in Luke 2, 41 to 42. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. And while we know Joseph loved God because of his faithfulness and obedience, we also know that he loved God because he loved God's son. 
There is no specific scripture verse that says this. But as we'll see shortly, he took God's son as his own. And he treated him as he would have treated a firstborn that he had conceived with Mary. We know this because he took his firstborn Jesus and taught him in the skill of carpentry, his own business. We know because Jesus told us he was God and when we love Jesus, we love God. Not only did Joseph love God, but we also know he was compassionate. Here is a man who we said earlier who had the right by law to have Mary stoned to death because she was pregnant with someone else's baby. I like what my new Living um, Translation Study Bible says about it. It says about Joseph. It says he was prepared to do what was right and try to do it the right way. Joseph decided to break the engagement but he was determined to do it in a way that would not cause public shame to Mary. He intended to act with justice and love. How do we know this? We know because it's in God's word. And so he chose not to disgrace Mary. In verse 19 of our scripture today, it says, Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Albert Barnes wrote in his commentary, to expose her to public shame or infamy. Adultery has always been considered a crime of a very heinous nature. In Egypt, it was punished by cutting off the nose of the adulteress. In Persia, the nose and ears were cut off. In Judea, the punishment was death by stoning. This punishment was also inflicted where the person was not married but betrothed. In this case, therefore, the regular punishment would have been death in this painful and ignominious manner. Yet Joseph was a religious man, Albert Barnes says, mild and tender, and he was not willing to complain of her to the magistrate and expose her to death, but sought to avoid the shame and put her away privately. He was doing what was right in the right way. But, even though that showed his compassion, when he obeyed the angel, he showed it so much more. Because he took on someone else's son, even God's son. This is hard enough when the father is just another man. But this time it was God's son. What a huge responsibility. But note the importance of what the angel said. She will give birth to a son and you will give him the name Jesus. You see, it was tradition in Jewish culture that the parents would name the child when presented for Britta, which was when he was circumcised. And even though God had chosen the name, he allowed Joseph to actually give it to him. Give him the name Jesus. It was an authority God passed on. So Joseph was a compassionate man, a man in God's likeness. And lastly, he was a father. I still remember when our sons, Caleb and Alex, were born. 24 years ago, just this Wednesday gone for Alex. I was at both of their births, but I was actually able to help deliver Alex. And I think what Joseph went through that night, knowing that he was becoming the earthly father for the Messiah, the Son of God, who would change the world by forgiving sinners. I know I felt a great responsibility to take hold when my two boys were born into the world. How much more did Joseph feel that responsibility? How much more joy knowing he was there when God incarnate came into the world? And he was part of it. While it was a tremendous responsibility, it was also a tremendous privilege. God chose Joseph to be the earthly father of his only begotten son. Secondly, as was Jewish custom, fathers, especially in Joseph's time, taught Jesus, his eldest son, the family business. 
We see this in Matthew 6, 3 and Matthew 13, 55, that Jesus was known as the son of a carpenter. And when Jesus went missing at the temple, he went back for him. We see it in Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 43. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him amongst, among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. And after three days, imagine the angst. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. What father wouldn't search or wouldn't go back for his son? Joseph loved Jesus because he was his father. He was a compassionate man and he loved God and he was a father. So what about us? Joseph is a man that we can look up to and emulate. We can learn a lot from him. His love for God. How do we love God? Joseph was obedient. He worked hard for his family and no doubt in his community. Obedience shows our love for God. In 1 Samuel 15, 22, it says, But Samuel replied, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. And then James 2, 14 to 17, and I know I've said this a lot in sermons. What good is it, James wrote, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith, but has no deeds. Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. And so we love God by our obedience. But we love God. It's a verb. It's a doing thing. And we love God by basically doing three things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength and all your mind. Luke, uh, Jesus said in Luke 10, 27. This is living a life totally for God that involves sacrifice, giving, testifying, witnessing, and bringing glory to God through all we do. But then there is love your neighbor as yourself, which is the very next verse, Luke 10, 27. Jesus commanded us to love one another like he loved us. And then all men would know that we are his disciples. When we love people with the love of God, people notice it. And the third thing, make disciples. In Matthew 28, 19 and 20, true love for God obeys. And so we are called to go and make disciples. Christmas is a great time to do this as people are already caught up in love for others. We should also emulate Joseph's compassion. He showed compassion to Mary even before God came to him through the angel. And so he was being like God. In Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7, it says, And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. God's compassion. Matthew 9.36 says, When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And God's greatest act of compassion, John 3.16 and 17 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus himself told us to show love and compassion in Matthew 25. 
right through to verse 36. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. This is how we show compassion. And Joseph was a father to the fatherless. On earth, Joseph was Jesus' father. The angel convinced him to be Jesus' father on earth. We may not all get to be fathers or even mothers, but we can all be father-like. But because fathers help people grow, they teach them. Fathers protect people. Fathers love people unconditionally and unfailingly. And they are like a shepherd loving the sheep. Jesus said to John, each time John said he loved Jesus on the beach, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. Why? Because like sheep, you and I, all of us, we have all gone astray. And we all need a father. Some of us had good fathers. Some of us did not have such good fathers. And some of us had no fathers at all. Many of us don't have our fathers living anymore. But I've heard people, people in our own church, talk about their fathers. And I think of my own dad. My dad was not a Christian. Like many of yours were. But he did display some Christian qualities. Having been raised himself by Christian parents in the 40s and 50s. He was generous, he was loving, he was kind, and he took care of his family, and he loved my mum. Joseph showed his love for God, the way he loved others. That's how we are to do it too. So, this Christmas, let's show people how much like Joseph we are, how much like God we are. Let us show people just how much we love God. Not just by our words, but like Joseph by our deeds. Not to earn Jesus' love, but to respond to it. Let's show people that we are compassionate, like Jesus was, like God is, doing the right thing the right way. Let's never do the right thing for the wrong reasons, or worse, the wrong thing for the right reasons. Let's truly show compassion by reaching out to others with God's compassion, feeding the hungry, visiting the sick, clothing the naked. And let's show people what a father is really like by showing that we are father-like, that we are like Joseph, that we are like God. Maybe it's about being father-like to someone who doesn't have a father in their lives or someone whose father didn't treat them the way of fathers should, the way God intended fathers to treat their children. But let's be like the great shepherd and help each other to grow, protecting people and loving them unconditionally the same way God loves us. But let's not do it just because it's Christmas. Let's do it every day when God's mercies are fresh and new every morning. Let's be like Joseph. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you now, Lord, we just want to lift up this time to you and what we've heard today. May it resonate in our hearts that we would live your word faithfully. We ask this in Jesus' most precious and powerful name. Amen.